that's the. All right, that's for sync. Yes, sir. All right. So how do? Why do I feel so? <laughs> bring up this chat. All right. So sit up a little bit. Welcome to another episode of Everything Cool. I know it's been a very, very long. Oh no! Oh boy! Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be starting. <laughs> oh no! Let me put this. Okay, just get it. The tourists come over to chill on the beach But they don't come over the hill where we sleep We got nightmares and they got fantasies No sanity, it's just insanity My mommy hoping nothing happens to me All right, hush. What would I think? Amazon is what Siri, not Siri. Uh, Alexa. Yeah. Alexa, be quiet. But let me do that again. All right. Welcome to another episode of Everything Cool. I know it's been a very, very long time. Last time I had an artist on this podcast, we did numbers, and that one became one of my faves. But I'm about to introduce y'all to another fave. Because this man made the album that's what was somewhat of my soundtrack for 2021. Well, we're going to get into that. But mm-hmm. let me first introduce myself. I am the Negus of Nassau, St. Anton Alexander, Law, Jalen Willard, at your service. And I'm joined by a very special guest. Please introduce yourself, sir. Hi, how are you guys doing? My name is Giovanni Robinson. I'm an artist, producer, mix engineer, graphic designer, and part-time architect. And yeah. Yes, Mr. Giovanni Robinson. Like, he have one of them old school names, like Smokey Robinson, you know, Ray Charles Robinson. Like, you know, them, them the, the type of men that make those anthems that make even your grandmother have flashbacks. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Them old, them old souls. Them old school <clears throat> jams where they resample to date. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, before we really get into every episode, we like to give our guests, you know, the pleasure of giving us the Bahamian word phrase or saying of the day. Oh, boy. Okay. The Bahamian word phrase or saying of the day. I'm a... Uh... I don't know, but uh, just blaze on my mind. Play. Yeah. Because you have a track name, but. Yeah. Is that one? Is that one? Is that one? Is that one, bro? And um, uh, I, I just feel like. Okay. Right I, I think it's been a while. This We in the 80s right now, forever and cool. I know it's been a long time since I've come, appeared before you in this fashion. But for the, you know, the viewing audience. Tell us what Bay is. Bay could be for just only a noun, you know, just only a noun. Uh, definitely genderless, in my opinion, but use more for males just to just to identify them, you know, just to identify them as a person or as a nuisance or as, you know. <laughs> Bro, you know what, what, what it, it's hilarious to me? Like how some girls be like, they, <laughs> like, you know, they stretch it. Like, like, you know, it's like you ain't used to it. Like, because normally times, Bay has like uh, a male sort of connotation to it. Like, yes. Bay, this Bay. Yes. Or whatever, like, you know. Or, because you don't really call a woman a Bay. No. Or whatever. But, you know, more so... More so in our time, we sort of refer to everybody as play. Yeah. Or whatever. Like, you know, or, you know, because I remember growing up, my mom would be like, you don't call gals, play, like girls, play. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, that's more so a commonplace now. Like, you say whoever. I feel mean, like with our, more so our generation, we call anybody, but. Yeah. Versus like, our older generation, bay is more so a male pronoun. Yes. Almost. Actually, speaking of pronouns, I should start changing 
Wait for the house to be played. No, just period. Wait. Just not him. Not no, I'm he, yeah, just just no, bait. No, no, bait. That is just bait. Just, <laughs> or, or, or the other spelling, bait. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All, <laughs> all three or four of the spellings, like my real nouns, is boy, 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 boy. Right, you yeah. know. You know, my own could just be the goat. Mm. It's just the goat. The, the goat. Exactly. I'm the. Go- you ever heard that African um song where this boy was like. I'm the goat. I'm the goat. Bad. <laughs> no, who, no, who is that from? This nah. one African, but like, uh-huh. he was on this TV show. I'm the goat. I'm the goat. Bad. I was like, I gotta make them a ringtone. You, you got it on your phone right oh, now? I gotta look it up. Hold, hold up. up. Hold <laughs> up. Hold up. Nah. Oh, man. Nah, that shit is hilarious. Uh, just... I'm the goat. I'm the goat. <laughs> Bad. I'm a. Oh, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me link it to Siri. Oh, uh, not Siri. <clears throat> Alexa. Alexa. I got two AIs doing your bidding. No, this ain't even an iPhone. This is an Android. Now connected to Galaxy S9 Plus. Sound right. like sound like Diane need an Apple. You calling for Siri so much? Yeah. Oh. What the fuck? What the hell? Everybody watch out. I was like, oh. I was like, bro, I about to link that my ring to it. I'm the goat. I'm the goat. Bear. Nah, bro. Africans are naturally funny. But, but aren't people are funny? funny? It's We're talking about people. those who live on a continent presently. And not those who live on a continent presently. Of course, you know, we, we all from there. But most of civilization. Well, but if, you drop me, if you drop me there right now, I'd be lost. Yeah, I mean, they would treat you like an outsider because they're exactly. like, but you ain't bred it here. Exactly. Oh, like, you know, yeah, you was descended from here, but you ain't bred. It's almost like how we view people that claim, like, especially in South Florida, that they Bahamian, but it's like, bro, you don't know how it is to, like, live that life. Right. Or whatever, like, really, like, have that sort of understanding how to move in uh, some sort of streets. I always talk about how you be for private school, but you still have to carry yourself like you from government school because everything close in proximity, so I can't be dumb. Or whatever, I still gotta, you know, carry my little cutty and my little bag. See what they saying? Mm-hmm. When I get mine inside there? I don't think I get inside there. Ever since I, I came actually back. I actually do have an insider. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I came back, I did not have to use any of those equipments yet. But I know what you mean. Like, like um, you, you need to have some street smarts. We grew yeah, up with yeah. street smarts, you know. I, and it don't matter, like, yeah, yeah, from making the bin lawyers or whatever, but you just know you go on, the island's so small and you have to go in certain environments. Yeah. You can't avoid it. So it's like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, if I like to go to 98 Degrees or Jungle Village or Prime Time, I may have to run into some dude too in that type of time and I got to carry myself correctly. Exactly. So, like, you know. But enough of that, Giovanni. Tell me how does your story all begin? Okay. So I was born in, actually, I was born in Miami Dade, Florida, uh, 1998. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my mom is Bahamian, my father, you know, Bahamian as well, but I was just, you know. He was one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Who I wish my parents had just picked up and have me in the States when it was still sort of legal before Homeland came into effect <laughs> after 9-11. But that's right. a story for another day. Definitely. Um, but yeah, my uh, introduction to music was, was pretty pretty close, pretty nearby. I was, um, my mom had us playing piano um, with piano lessons, singing in choirs. Um, I move over here when I'm like around six. Oh, so you, you grew up in the States? A little, for bit, a little bit, like, yeah, yeah. for a little bit. So they was already living there. They didn't just go there to have you and then come up. Yeah, they yeah they were living there. Okay. Oh, my mom was. My mom was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I came over here. The music, artsy side, continued to flourish. I was in like, 
national choirs and youth choirs and church choirs. And I don't know, I was just more of a, I just developed more of an arts, as an artsy person. I was drawing and designing and, you know, I was really into sports. Um, not that I couldn't do it, but I just was, you know. Mm. And, you know, finding myself um, growing up, it was let's say just say it was a it was it was a challenge. Um, niggas niggas called me the singer. The yeah, singer. The singer. Bro. Oh, another singing nigga. Another singing nigga. Because <laughs> exactly. Kaden they hated that. Like yo, this you is... mean, you want, I want people feel like yo, I just get sing or whatever. Don't tell me you used to sing in the church too. Yes, I used to sing in church. <laughs> Everybody niggas, used to sing in the church. Of course. Of, where else to go? Especially in the Bahamas. Where else to go for real? Um. Yeah, man, solos, choirs, all that. Mm. Um, let's let's go high school. I was at SAC for a minute. You went to SAC. I went to SAC for a minute. Hold on. So why? Oh, because I know you graduated from QC. So yeah. how you going to SAC and left SAC? The cult. <laughs> the to cult go to, to go to another cult. I mean, QC ain't really a cult like like how SAC is. Like you know, when I was there, it was it was, it was deep. No, I think I think because I've heard from a lot of alumni from QC where the the culture is somewhat like really I wouldn't say oppressive, but you mm-hmm. know it's like yeah you have to do good in school type of yes. situation. Yes, but I think how the sackers have like they loyal to the sort of type of thing ten toes down whatever. Mm-hmm. I think no other school in this whole country like that. They ain't ten toes down. I could agree with that. okay. Yeah. I could agree on yeah. that in that aspect. Yes. Yeah. Um. But um. I think it was my mother's decision, kind of, to just be mm-hmm. like, okay. Uh. Okay. It's some things weren't connecting well. You go into this school with your other brothers. So I know that I got two younger brothers. They're twins. Um, oh, so they finished at SAC. No, they finished at QC with me. So all they all left SAC to go to QC. No, just me, just me. They was they been there. Okay. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> you know. Graduate QC, uh, head to UB. I was doing architecture for a minute. Um, but How it just, many years was at UB? It was like t- two, three years. Oh, wow. Including 2020. Yeah. Oh, so you just went to Full Sail? That was in 2022, yeah. Oh, I thought you like, was already at Full Sail by the time we had met. Yes, yes, I was. Yes, yes. In 2021, yeah, okay, yeah, I was there. Yeah. But like that in 2020, that's when I started. That's when I started that. When I ended UB, and that's when I started Full Sail. Uh-huh. So basically, at UB, I was doing architecture. Um, I wasn't liking how it planned out. I dropped out for a minute, went to the working world. Kind of. Where you working with specifically? <clears throat> it was a. Uh, it was an insurance uh, company. I think it was called AFS Insurance. It's uh, right. it's on. It's in Golden Gates, I think. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, it was in Golden so, Gates. Yeah. One of them. It was a uh, Bahamian owned. Okay. Yeah, stayed there for like a year, built up some you know money, lived a little bit of life, and I was like, okay, let me get back in the system, see if I can finish this uh, architecture thing. So I go back in UB. The pandemic hits. Okay, but and this happened. This happened like summer pre 2020. 20, yeah, pre, okay. Which March 2020 is when the pandemic. Hit. So March all 20. this had to take place before really 2020. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this job was 20 was off the end of 2018 going into 2019. Okay. I leave the job to go to UB around September. 2019. Okay. That's when Dorian. Yeah, Dorian. That's when Dorian happened. September 2019. Yeah. Um, during that time, I was create. Well, let's backtrack a little. When right. in 2016, that's when I was like, okay, I want to do musical yeah. stuff. Oh, so when you graduated from QC, 2015? 16. Okay, so you graduated QC 2016. Yeah. And then from 2016 to 2019, you're trying to figure out what's your path. Basically, within UB, yeah. So, <clears throat> by day, I was, you know, in architecture, just doing to do. By night, I took my mom's fucking iPad 
and was like, okay, how to do this musically, how to do that musically, you know, because growing up, I had like musical idols. There was Michael Jackson, there was Prince, there was Stevie Wonder, all them types of old ass niggas, you know, and they all did the shit themselves mostly. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow that. If they can do it, why, why can't I? Um, but yeah. So throughout 2016, 2017, musically, I was just making s just songs. Never saw a studio. I don't know a thing about mics. I don't know a thing about anything. I just was creating beats. Okay, the beat sounds good. Let me put myself on it. Okay, it sounds something. And then I just let it go out into the fucking air with no traction, no nothing. Just doing it to do it because it was an outlet. You know, <clears throat> but by fast forward to 2019, Dorian hit. Um, I sat down with that as everybody else did. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to create some good music because I have the time to. And I'm going to just make something just because I'm going to just do it because why not, you know. So that's what that reality position to me. So I dropped this album called Modern Boy, November 2019. And, you know, during this time, headed into UB, the pandemic hits in March 2020. And I was just stuck home. <clears throat> you know, I was just stuck home doing nothing. And I was like, you know what? Okay, great. I'm gonna just create some more. I had a record with um, one of my boys, Kasik. I think you met him, right? Yeah, I did meet Kasik. Yeah. I met him at the box when the box was. We're going to get to that, yeah. Yeah, that, like, that was a good time. Yeah. So the box happened in June 2020. It was actually me and Ben that was just, <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. You should have checked me for the first time I said something. Yeah, you oh, good? boy. Uh, he just he just showed me try not to curse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. yeah, that's the, we can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, PG thirteen, PG. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like from let's say twenty eighteen to now, uh -huh. um, Benjamin's been in my life. He was like, okay. I so see I thought you met at QC. We did. Well, we met prior to that. We met in primary school in Xavier's. Okay. Yeah. So we were, you know, we were cool then. All right. And then we just got closer as time marched on and shit. Okay. So he's been one to be like, for a minute to just be like, okay, this is, this is cool. This ain't cool. Um, do this with your voice, do that with your voice for a minute. Um, and he was doing his own thing, you know, making Hamian what it was, mm -hmm. you know. Hamian. Hamian, yeah. I just got a great flashback. <laughs> <laughs> and this was only like, literally like two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, height of the pandemic, everybody doing nothing. Benjamin comes out and he's like, yo, I want to do this, this, this group thing. This What's box. It? This box thing. Yeah. You know, and I was like, all right, cool. Um, so I think we all helped them with that and it became a hub at the Dundas Center. Yeah. Um, where everybody was just hanging out, coming to chill out. Yeah. For <clears throat> mostly him and his peers and people he knew. Yeah. And, and it was a, it was like a, it was like a, a Mecca of sorts. Yeah. Like Tinfro was a thing and soon telling y'all we going to bring Brandon on here soon. I probably gonna interview him within the next like three weeks. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Me and him, me and Brandon actually have a lot of history, but we gonna get into that on his episode. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's why I met you. Yeah, that's why I met a majority of <clears throat> the other artists. Cause around. like Ben, I was doing helping Ben do the Hamian podcast, which is like a four part series, still live on the Original People Network. I think if you go on the homepage. You can find a playlist with all the episodes. You can see Giovanni or whatever. And actually, Giovanni's song, Sunday, 
is the intro song for those Hamian episodes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that was a you know a collab thing I did with Kasik. And yeah, was I was asking y'all how y'all clear all these records with these samples and things like that, and he was like, "Wait, wait, SoundCloud and then Spotify, but we ain't signing that." <laughs> so <clears throat> we were just we were just just kids making it igno- ignorant of the business. Mm-hmm. We was just assuming that you know we will never we will cross that bridge when we get there, mm-hmm. and. And yeah, that's 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 how it was for a minute. So let's go back to Hamian. Hamian okay. and I meet everybody there. You know, everybody is doing their own thing with Hamian, just connecting, just vibing. I meet um, Jalen, and you know, during that time, I was looking at Full Sail, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just go take my music to the next level, mm-hmm. and get a skill in engineering so that I eat doing it. So you wasn't doing engineering at it? I was, but I was, but I wasn't, you know, I I didn't know any, I didn't know the technicalities of it really. Mm -hmm. I still didn't know. Um, Well, I learned from YouTube, but then I was like, yeah, no, it's only so much it could give me. So... By July, I was I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock on that door. They let me in, and and yeah, I was in full sale by then, and I was doing it home online. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, I was doing it home online at the beginning. So July 2020 is when you enroll at full sale. Yes. Okay, so you didn't go to the campus until 2022. No, uh, no 2021. It was 2020. Okay, <clears> so <throat> you went to campus 2024. Because you were saying, when you made Warm Colors. Yeah, that was 2021. Yeah. When you made Warm Colors, yeah. you was already in school and you was like, yo, I had just to have, I do a little bit of living to sort of make the album. I was in Orlando by that time, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, <laughs> that album was made out of pain, bro. <laughs> that album was made out of pain. <laughs> 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 oh, that this, was made that, out of pain. Why you saying it's made out of pain? Because it's... Of- but it was sound like I ain't told Sherwood, right? I uh-huh. say, but you was making Cunny Mind music, bro. Mm-hmm. And that album, Borderline, is, but as a T, bro, like, you know, mm-hmm. I around here, it is what it is. Like, if you want to be in love, we can be in love, but if it ain't, it ain't. That's what you got off of Sherwood thing or my thing? No, I got off that from his, his thing. His stuff. His two singles with this plant and the way. But I got that also off of Warm Colors because it was like, it was like an instructional to like, um, like like um, out of state. Yeah. It was like you know you instructing the girl like yo this your moment, man you out your body like listen like like, like this some G type pimp type things bro. <laughs> or whatever like yeah. yo this way tell him yeah like this how governing the situation. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean I wouldn't necessarily feel pain, but it's like it's almost like. I would say it's a lover's quarrel type of them theme type of thing. Like it's yeah. like I'm meeting you, you're going through these different emotions. This is what my expectations is. Yes. So, you know, I don't I, I wouldn't say I sense pain exactly from those records. You ain't uh, sense no pain. Well but stress me out. Uh-huh. And like, you know, it's a, it's a good like good record to where it's like, yo, like I wouldn't say pain, but it's like, yo, it's, it's so cool with me. Don't stress my vibe. Like it's a vibe. Like I, I love me. Yeah. Oh, man, that's how I'm gonna dictate the situation. Yeah. So, yeah. Like you know, we need quality time. We need this. I some feel like out of time. I need. Don't stress me out. Don't freak me out. Like you know, I'm gonna stay. You know, exact and correct. You right. can do whatever nonsense you want, but when you come around me. This what it is. Right. So that's the type of feeling I got from that warm colors. Wow, thank you. Uh, I didn't know my music was was moving people like that. But yeah, because I, I mean, listen, I had that in my car, running from top to bottom for a stretch, bro. A stretch. Yeah, like freely, like you drop the album, like when March, it was like 20, March twenty one. Yeah. yeah, from March twenty twenty one until like August, mm-hmm. that was in rapid rotation inside uh, on my Spotify. 
Respect. Like, respect. probably all the way out to the end of the year, because it was like, it's the type of vibe I be on. And mm-hmm. it ain't even no pain thing. It's like, you know, I ain't trying to be like this. And like, my favorite song off of that is the first track. Out of time. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, out yeah. of time. Yeah, out of time. Out of time. Um, we will we'll definitely get into how those tracks were made. All right, so um, let's just go back to Cindy. <laughs> Because like Sunday, I think when I first listened to Sunday, I was like, okay, this is solid. Mm-hmm. And then I like the city. Yes. Yeah, this, the, the, the city. city is is dope next to like Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's a, like one of the standard tracks from off the album. So what? Take me through that process of you doing that with Kasik. Okay, big ups to my boy Kasik. Mm-hmm. Um, we met. I think it was December twenty. 20- 19 he we were both performing at like one thing at btvi i think that's where we officially met no no it wasn't we met at ub one time we reunited at btvi doing this performance thing um he's like but i just want to do songs with you and i was like all right bet. playing from galaxy s9 plus sorry about that. yeah that's straight that's straight <laughs> <laughs> that's straight so so from like december 2019 up till it was released in february 2020 yeah. Yeah. So from December and January, we was just making like about nine tracks, just 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 pure hip hop on some Watch the Throne shit, and it would have been on some Watch the Throne shit had it not been for the world stopping, you know. So yeah, every song he he, I think it was Kasik that Kasik that brought up the beats, and it was he gave them to me. We record by my house. Mm-hmm. I had this laptop you know you know about the different DAWs right you know what? A, the different DAWs what do you mean a different DAW? okay so a DAW is a digital audio workstation okay you you've recently been inside a studio you uh, you know Pro Tools yeah okay cool so so Pro Tools Reason all the rest of uh, those things yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't know it, w- it was called a door specifically DAW <laughs> uh, yeah but not yeah so oh you saw that video because <laughs> 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 I was like door man I never heard, oh. heard that specific term mm-hmm you was, right. was just in there for vibes okay cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, I know for Fruit Tools and Reason and um you know I obviously be doing a podcast I do audio um Adobe Edition and stuff like that so, yeah you know okay Underst- yeah. understandable but like like for the music side, like what people use for music, we use Ableton, Pro Tools, Logic, and stuff. Yeah, I would use Ableton. We go by my house, record. Um, if he wanted to come back, he'd come back and get it done. You know, it was just me and him in my room, just getting it cranking until like the evening hour, and you know, we trimmed those tracks down, made them as professional as I could get them back in the time without any, you know, and it was it was focused on hip hop. And it was just it was just us creating, honestly. You know, it was just us creating. It was him with his with his with his voice, contrasted with me and my voice. And we just talk our talk our talk on these different records. You know. Um that's how the city came about. The city The City <laughs> You know, I would i I'd sing the hook. I sang the hook first and he he loved it. He dropped his his track on it, his verse on it, I dropped my verse on it, and it was good to go. That's how it was basically for the rest of them, you know. And um, yeah. That's Sunday. We tried Sunday. to get that we tried we tried it was a solid record. I think it's a solid record. Yeah. Was it the first time you heard about me with that record? No, I saw you perform and then I went and sort of sort out the music and I listened to it and I was like, okay, it's solid. Hmm. But that warm colors, because you was promo, and then I was like, all right, you find it one in the night, listen to us, like, yo, I ain't never heard nothing like this from No Bahamian. Wow. Like, at that time. Now, I've heard some good stuff since then, mm-hmm. and I've told, I think, yeah, like, I have, like, some of my favorite Bahamian projects that's come out in the last, like, let's say, 18 months, and it's, like, warm colors, the show was grounded, and then it's Canaan stuff. Mm-hmm. Like his uh, play, XX, X One Playboy, and it's like 
Yo, I love I love them three. Well, I love a couple other <coughs> tracks from Kenan, but them two projects, that grounded project and them warm colors, yo, I love them. Like I play them top to bottom any day, anytime because it's like it was a complete vibe to the point where when I heard warm colors, I was like, bro, what you doing for this? I'm like, bro, I'm going to make a Saturday. Meet me at ice. We're going to mm-hmm. shoot some like stuff. I'll give you the, the, like, the, the clips or whatever, because that's how much I love the project or mm-hmm. whatever. Like, you know, Respect. And, and it was like, yeah, like, you know, it, it, it brought me back to when we was talking about off mic to where you hear such great music and you just, I start feeling sad because I'm like, how we could get the thousands and thousands of people to hear this, mm-hmm. and you know, I just love that project from top to bottom. Um, you know, I have my favorite tracks, of course. But tell us, take me through the process of creating warm colors. Why you named it warm colors? Because obviously, more than boy was like your go to title project for you as an artist like by the time of 2020 going into 2021 Mm -hmm. okay um it was you know i was dealing with uh with with, uh i guess just a fling uh by like 2020 2021 like by the end tail and you know they was they wasn't you know they wasn't you know treating me right and i was like yeah uh my heart my soul i could pour this into the music and <clears throat> warm colors came out of like i think it was like six months of me just making making beats and me and ricky that's my like business partner we met right before warm colors actually i mean no not right before warm colors. right before i dropped modern boy he heard of me and he heard my stuff and he was like you know i want to be on this journey with you so it was between me and him just bouncing beats bouncing lyrics bouncing mixes bouncing you know masters um up until up until like march of 2021 the last song i did for that record i think was stressed me out and that was like a couple days prior to me dropping it but ever all throughout then i was just making so warm colors is is a play on just is a play on just a feeling of soul, I guess R and B soul. I wanted it to be a, I wanted it to be a project reminiscent of pain. I don't know what Jalen got else from that, but he says the vibe. I just I I made it out of pain, bro. I was this girl from my heart. Me and Ricky always wanted like an R and B type soul type project to start with. Mm-hmm. Um, during like. 2020 we just didn't know where to start Mm -hmm. i go away to orlando for school mess with one american (laughs) thing it's the american things that just get you bro uh because you initially you would think because i think every bahamian student let's go over the states and be like oh let me see how a person not from my culture would be like and then some a lot of cases be either the same or 10 times worse Mm. It, oh, yeah. it don't never be better it's right. just be like either the same and then you realize everybody's the same or it'd be worse it, it, for me it was very different it took me off guard how people act how people move and then and then I just lay back and I'm like okay this is probably how everybody acts mm-hmm. you know this is probably how everybody you know moves the culture might be different, you know, customs might be different, but, you know, some mannerisms are still the same. Yeah. You know. Because plenty of Bahamian gap, plenty of y'all just go away and think, oh, well, these American dudes might be different from these Bahamian dudes, but a lot of times y'all just realize they 10 times worse. We better, bro. Yeah. We so better. <laughs> <laughs> they just realize that, like, wait, we taught Bahamian dudes is bad and it's cheat you like mm. crap? No way. He's better, bro. We we give you the compliments every or time. Or they try some other islander or African dude. It's be all the basically the same mm-hmm. same type of experience, depending on the growth of the person. Right, so, you know. right. But we, ain't nobody is no shingyas like we do. Ain't nobody is. I guess you huh? Okay. I mean, unless you're a simp. Unless I just, unless yeah. you're a simp. <laughs> I mean, how I see it. 
it's just we just treat them we treat women great because great. Just make, make predicate because our society is so matriarchal it's just like you know and it's like yes mom no mom no mom also you trying to be on some player type thing so it's like using manners to sort of be a little bit deceptive Mm. <laughs> like you know, mm. like yeah, I go open the door for you and do this for you, and mm. like you know, I sell you this dream. Right, <laughs> right. That is that is possible. Yeah, yeah like, I I never thought of it that way. I just used to do it out of the sickness of my heart and whatever. No, but some dudes do it because like it's out of their heart, but it's part of their game. Yeah, it's just like yeah, like I doing this for you, but you know, that's just a part of the game. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, whether you take a bait or not, it's whatever, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, I feel you, but yeah, everybody has their own methods of getting it. I mm-hmm. that 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 um really opened its mind to me as I got you know older over there. And oh, I just want you know, I don't even want to be in no relationship, I just want to date, I just want to do this, this, this. And then I had you to want make, this one, be a guy, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, then they realize, oh, okay, there's some things I gotta work about with myself mm-hmm. before I ever really get serious, really get serious, or before I ever really even do it, even for the fun, like. Like, you know Kevin Samuels. Yep. You know Kevin Samuels. Listen, God bless his heart. This, well, not even that, particularly this, but I had Kevin Samuels Jr. <laughs> long live the Godfather. You know. No, but you no, know, for real. Like after a while, like he was right on. And a lot of dudes like Andrew Tate and say like, you know, yeah, but he, being promiscuous is fall fun again. But mm-hmm. after a while, it's like, what are you and I actually doing? Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, you would chase gal, but play mine. You caught up and chase a woman, chase a woman. Then you look up and then you ain't got nothing to your name. Right. Or you ain't made no money. You ain't you know have no goals or nothing. You could say lean on and say, hey, I built this. Right. So you know his legacy was was basically you know have your own and build your own mm. before you ever deal with any of these anything else. Mm. You know and. Me being away and, and witnessing him blow up and his death in the first time, it was like, okay, I want to implement, implement like being a better person in my life, mm-hmm. you know? Because honestly, like throughout growing up, I didn't know who the hell I was. Mm-hmm. I was just existing. I was just existing for real. And then I'd say my 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 father, I had father figures and mm-hmm. they'd be in my life too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but I guess just hearing it constantly at your whim of the internet you know in the way that kevin samuels did it and his message of just improving yourself before anything it really hit home for me uh growing up to be like okay uh get yours before your time runs out you know so that played a part in in the album as well you know because i wanted to i didn't want to make just for making you know, I wanted to make to create a catalog. I wanted to create to um, build an audience and build a legacy, you know, so, yeah. So why the title Warm Colors? I... Oh, you just I, was trying to be in some artsy fartsy? I was being... Um, partially, but yeah, I wanted a record that was warm, R&B, soulful, sultry. Um... And just paint along the lines of just everything I was going through. Mm. I wasn't feeling cold. I wasn't feeling neutral. I was feeling warm. Mm. Dealing with this this one this one. So thing. it sounded like this girl was like you almost thought she could have been the one, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. yeah, but you know. You just start seeing some other things and you be like, no, babe, retreat. <laughs> exactly. No, dog. Um, this is for fun. This is for a moment in time. Oh, man. It hurt. But mm. but one thing I learned about being over there is that the women are abundant. Oh, they are abundant. Yeah. You know, but using that, yeah, hit, dealing with, you know, that, that, that person uh, helped me to just go through all these emotions and just 
write them down and create in that way, you know? So let's start with out of time, out of time. Oh, that's it on that, on that record. Bro, that's my favorite record. <laughs> I sometimes be to myself and start singing that like word for word. That's like, like you know, like what was your thinking behind that? My thinking was, my thinking was that I feel as if this moment in in time is just gonna be. Every time I see this gal, I'm out of time. But every time I'm with her, I know that. Is only for a brief moment, you know. Mm. It's you for a brief that? moment, so let's get serious. As so you know, it's worth as the days, days go by. I focus, focus on myself, myself and, and the world, world is mine. mine. You know, you know, you you I don't crack in the pr- <laughs> listen, listen, that's playing lines, bro. That's playing lines, bro. I don't crack in the pressure, right? I say true for lie. I hope you realize. <laughs> I don't know, I realize we, we are running, running out, out of time. Time, time. time. <laughs> yeah, bro. So I, I was... split, bro. That's some like a lot of the records are some on some play stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like you playing the game. That's why when you say it hurt, I'm like, no, that sound like pimp play it. Like I give you the game, like how to you know move in the streets type of thing. Mm. You know? Yeah, it was it just a woman built character, bro. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say. Okay. Um, but yeah. Um, so that's where Deep End comes into play. And Deep so. Deep End was the first uh, of the first of the songs I made on there. Uh, I made that in August 2020. Mm. That was not until it to anything with this woman. Mm. That was just an R and B Lucy. Going off to the deep end. Yeah. Shorty is a moon and a star. Shorty is the one I can see it from afar. Hey. I was making that for my then uh gal at the time. Uh-huh. You know, you know, because you know, I I I was in a, a relationship. Uh, serious in, relationship. Was, yeah, and I was feeling I was feeling that at the time. So I was like, yeah, I just feel like I was So would you consider yourself an R and B artist or a hip hop artist? Or you just sort of go in between the two? I see myself... Or just like a broad artist. Like, I just create what I feel like creating. I definitely see myself as a hybrid. Yeah, like, because I feel like... Even like Stress Me Out is like a Afro beat, you know. Type of track. Yeah, you know. It's... um. It, I don't really fit the R&B label, you know. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, some people have been critical of how I sound mm-hmm. vocally. And, um, you know, I'm still trying to find myself vocally on that. And, and I'm definitely not a hip hop artist because I don't be rapping a lot. And there's a, you know, there's an image that I can't keep up with that. Yeah. And also everybody does that shit. And uh, I'm so, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You ready? You broke this, that. This, for, this, this for another take. <laughs> this is another take. We do it another take. And I can't be a hip hop artist because everybody's doing that. And I can't fit that role too much. I mean, you could fit it. Like, you'd be a backpacker. I'd be a... Backpacker or, like, a hybrid, like, melodic. We also, you know, in the Grammys, they have, like, that melodic category now, so... That's true. That's that's yeah. true. But, uh, you know, even then, I feel like that lane is, is so oversaturated. I just... I want... I still want to play the field of sounds. I want to do country. I want to do EDM. Hmm. I want to do pop. I want to... I want to be in a lane that where... I could, I want to put, I want to put the Bahamas on the map. That's like mm-hmm. one of my goals. But I also, for me, I just want to be generationally defining, hmm. you know. But I think a lot of Bahamian talent these days are, because there's so much influences, both pulling from not only just internationally, but nationally. Like, okay, like, I know a lot of Bahamian artists are, um, influenced by John McKay. Yes. The okay. Zuma, and his music was just featured in Nope. Yes. The John and Peele movie. Yeah. So, you know, this notion of, oh, Bahamianist, da 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 you just see a big blockbuster film influence. The, the, the director said he was influenced by a Bahamian music. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, this you can't disregard where you're from. Like, 
people are being influenced from where you're from mm -hmm. and they're not showing any other diversity from your culture. So it's up to you to just say, let me maximize this culture because anybody else really know it. So I'm going to cut myself from everybody else in the market space if I do this. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of Bohemian artists are making fusion music mm. to where it's like it's it's inspired for so many different genres and so many different um different textures and things like that to where it's a whole different sound. Right, right. And you know, I see the artists say, okay, how would you categorize or put a genre on my music? Like I think Sherwood did it. And I was like, bro, it's like Afro Caribbean soul. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> it's like you can't say it's reggae or but it got calypso elements, but it's like have a little like you know down tempo, you know realistic like you know it's it's so much of a hybrid. It's like you can't, and I think back to Tony Tony McKay, they can't really classify his music. They say it's folk, mm. something 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 something, but right. it got Reagan scrape and jungle elements to it too. Right. So it's like. You know, because there's so much of the influences, we is making hybrid music, and it's like okay, then we just make music that's true to me, and then whatever happens after that happens. I agree. Um, yeah. We we definitely are influenced by America, um, for the most part. Not just America, but the rest of the Caribbean too. The rest of the Caribbean, and, and yeah, correct. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not counting them out as well. Um, for me, I think it's like in our generation. When it comes on a creative side, I guess we don't we don't know ourselves that much, and if oh like we just shun what we do know about ourselves, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's more so because of the multiple influences. You don't want to deal with an imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. and you want to feel like what you're creating is authentically you are uninfluenced by anything but that's why i saying i think the fusion thing is the most authentic thing because it's like um i like this and that and that and that and these sort of elements and i'm not trying to be like what already pre-exists but more so i'm trying to carve out a lane for myself yes yeah um yeah everybody Everybody wants to be, you know, oh, I don't sound like nobody. But the exactly. truth is, yeah. the truth is everybody, someone will reference you to someone. Yeah. You know, um, you just have to stay the course. You know, I'm still staying the course of just perfecting my craft and my sound to where it's, it's still authentic. But, you know, I'm still trying to find me and it'll get to a point where my voice and my sound is going to fit comfortably. You're going to notice a Giovanni record. You're so, going to notice a this and then that. You know? So is that like what you've been trying to do since the record with the different singles like Bay and um, the records that you have with Impact? Mm. I was doing that even with Warm Colors, honestly. Okay. Yeah, I was doing that with Warm Colors, definitely. Because, um, you know, as I said before, I produce my own music. You know, I do the mix, I do the master. I'm basically crafting the sound from top to bottom, you know. So because not because it's cost effective, but because I like to do it and I'm trying to find a sound that where it's fit and it's balanced and stuff like that, you know. So creation it's just a process, you know, and you have to be you have to be married to that process at all times. That's what I see, hmm. you know. Okay, so what's some of your, why do you feel like you, so did you think about yourself being a Raptor and then you started doing melodic stuff or you just was like, let me just make music? It was just, it was just basically let me make music as an outlet. If I rap on it, I rap on it. If I sing on it, I, I sing on it. Oh, this was made for that. Oh, this was made for this. Mm. Um, even it was some of the stuff I was listening to really influenced my my shit too. Like Okay, so what what was some of the things you was listening to at the time? Uh, this was around twenty sixteen. I was listening to shit like I'm sorry. 
Let me tell you one more time. Let me do one more time. Mm-hmm. It was around 2016. I was listening to stuff like Lil Yachty, Drum. Um, they were popping at the time. 2017. I was more focusing on my strengths. Uh, so I was listening to more, much more R&B. Um, Frank Ocean, Sir, Dreamville mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, and as Afrobeats came around like 20... Afrobeats was like 2017. It was around 2017. It was like, too. you know, like, okay, like DeVito started a burst on the scene, and then, you know, now we in like this Burner Boy era. Wiz Kid, era. yeah. Yeah, Wiz Kid, Burner Boy era. Thames, yeah. Thames. Yeah. You know. They, they're they influencing the stuff I listen, the stuff I make now. Not in the, not all I'd the say time. 2017 to now. Yeah. Like Afrobeats started bubbling on the scene. You know? Yeah. It was mostly. Okay, yeah, it was mostly because I think I think the 2016 era of people taking dancehall and making tropical house is what sort of sort of opened up the way for Afrobeat. You think so? Because because remember, like, okay, it was this whole thing in 2015, 2016 where a lot of Jamaican artists was like, "Yo, they taking dancehall and calling it tropical house." Mm -hmm. So it was like, I like Justin Bieber's song. I'm sorry, like what Drake was starting doing a lot of the beats. For Can't. views and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So around that time it was Tropical House. Yeah. So like when DeVito started bursting up and all the Wiz Kid, Tim, Burner Boy started coming with this Afro beats, it started coming the same vein. Yeah. As that. And you know, they started really bubbling and bursting on the scenes. Mm-hmm. And then they started collaborating with more American artists. And mm-hmm. then that's how it really like started to cross over more heavier. Yeah. How could we forget about Pop Condo? Uh, Popcorn was, yeah. Uh, yeah, very influential in that as well, especially for me. Yeah. So yeah, I just gotta shout that out. Mm. <clears throat> but um, yes, that that entire like drift, that entire drift into like more international sounds. Yeah, like world music, like how they say. Yeah, and also with the with the with Advent uh, Latin trap, with with Bad Bunny, J Balvin, and and um, reggaeton, and yeah, yeah, and um, who else? Oh, uh, Anuela. Okay. Like, yeah, like you know, some of that still that like, beat that deep in a way, and then yeah, like you know, yeah. So where it's like, it ain't the tempo ain't too fast, but it ain't too slow. It could give me like right in the middle type of thing. Yeah, you know, because I've been dying for people in Nassau to have an Afro beats party. Like, yeah, Soka's cool, but Soka's like high. High RPP, RP, BPM. Oh R- R- yeah, RP. Is RPM or RBBPM? I think it's BPM. It's like RBBMs. I don't know where you're getting R from. Okay, Rate so high minute? BMs. BPM. BPM. Beats I, yeah. per minute. Yes. Yeah. A high BPM, like you know, probably in one hundred five to one hundred twenty BPMs, whereas like Afro beats is more like eighty five or so. I say Afro beats is like in the low hundreds range. It'd be like from like ninety something to like a hundred, yeah. ten, a hundred. The fastest, the fastest ones would be like a hundred twenty. Yeah, but yeah, but it's is more so. It ain't as fast as like a Silka song or like. No. but it ain't slow either. No, yeah, so it's like a good nice. Yeah, fire for sure. Yeah, yeah hey, well, you know, you will hey, we'll bop to it. Yeah, like, we'll yeah. move to it. You know, it's accustomed to make you move. It has a bounce enough to make yeah. you be. You can't be still to it. Yeah, but it ain't. No, no, no. Like, no you no. know, like like some house or EDM music. Even though I like my EDM music every now and again. Like, I love like, EDM you know. music. I love house music. Yeah. Um, Kate Renata is just different. Yeah, I've been hear- I've been meaning to sort of listen to her stuff because I've been hearing about Kate Renata. You know, like, oh my goodness. Start with ninety nine percent. Then yeah. start with Bubba. Start with his Boiler Room. His boiler room performance, basically his boiler room performance. Yeah, it's like what they be having in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, because I I subscribe to that page and I be seeing that videos all the time, but I don't press play. Man, yeah. it, he he is a vibe. Yeah, an absolute vibe. But um, yeah, I back to you know my sound. Yeah, international music was flooding in, and I guess from twenty sixteen onward, um where my sound started with a little bit of like trap artists and a little bit of R&B, um, it would progress into just being, okay, you are not from America. You don't need to do trap. You are not from, you are not that much of an R&B 
singer, you know, because I guess you don't have that much training. You just have to focus on your strengths of just being a vibe. Mm -hmm. And as the world moved that way, it influenced me to become to become this hybrid of doing everything, but presenting it in a way that was my own, which was, you know, just a peculiar way, I'd say. Okay, so what do you think about the whole dance revolution that's happening right now? Like where more artists are making dance music. Like, you know, you have Beyonce's recent album. Um, you had Drake, Sob Story, Nevermind. That's more a little bit dance. Um, you have the explosion of Bad Bunny, shouting out like stadiums. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, Somebody said music is now going to be more mood based than genre based. They were saying that for a while. Yeah, but I think it's being more apparent though. Mm. To where it's like, especially with this hybrid feel, it ain't going to be about, oh, this with, with drama. It's like, what mood this is? All oh, right, it's early morning, this midday, this late at night, this two, three o'clock in the morning. Like, you know, what, what type of mood this? high depressing, happy, low, this thinking, I can study to this. Like, you know, that I think that's where it's drifting to, especially with the streaming. Yeah, I think that's another thing as well. Um, also internationally, there is moods, mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with like the day party, late night party, early morning party. Like, Be in Europe, you rich, you feeling it, yeah, you're not feeling it. On a boat. I on the, on the top of the top of the uh, Empire State Building or pool party on top of some exquisite twenty two floor estate. Mm -hmm. Like you know where I where what kind of music I want to take me to a certain place. I know? think people want their lives to be a movie. You know, people want their lives to be a movie. So we're making music now where it's digestible for a time. Mm. You know, our attention spans are shorter. You know, we 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 can't deal that much with long songs. I, in my opinion, I mean, I think it depending on if it's good. If it's because obviously, good. especially the third verse is has been killed, extinct. Because mo most songs come with you get the hook and the bridge in the front, and then you get the first verse hook, and maybe a bridge, and then second verse, and then you get the hook and the bridge and song over. Mm -hmm. Versus having a third verse. Yeah. The yeah. song structure has been has been jeopardized in a way, thanks to the advent of streaming. And also thanks to the advent of TikTok. Um, yeah. I believe. <clears throat> but yeah, back to your question about dance. Um, people just want their lives to be a movie, especially after all the world events we've found ourselves in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good music. It's good music, but I just think um, it is 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 the world has to catch up a little bit to it. I think I like both records though, Beyonce stuff and Drake stuff. I'm just a fan of like I remember when we was having our Halloween party inside there. Mm. I, I had a near vibe. I was playing like oldies, seventies records, some eighties pop. Um, mixing in some of the current artists that are recycling those sounds and it's like you know i at my age i don't want to hear too much booming mm. especially like late afternoon going into the night type of situation mm. um and it's like i just want to vibe i don't want to be too up but i don't want to be too down either mm. you know i understand for, for for me, I, I always liked like the uh, old soul stuff that my yeah. My that's parents, what I think. I think that's me and you had a conversation about it. He was like, "Yeah, I grew up on a lot of old music." Yeah. So you know, so it it it's it's timeless. It's yeah. just timeless. I think, I think if the I think you will know when the music is timeless. You know, um. Yeah, I think you just know when music is timeless. For me, um, Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. always on my heart. Um, Motown, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Jackson, Prince, they're they're great. Um, Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin. We're just gonna go through all the all, names, all the legends, <laughs> all the legends, bro. They all, all the just. Legends. 
I'd say I'd say they are the standard of what I do mm. over everything else. You know, because I think I think older generations have set a precedent for us to just become greater. Mm. You know, so and they're the blueprint. So I think that I believe they're just going back to the roots is basically just gonna help me as an artist improve, you know, help everybody improve. So what's next for you, Gio? Like, you put up Warm Colors, it's 2022. 2022 is already basically over. We're mm-hmm. going into 2023. Like, are you done with um, Full Sail or are you graduating this year or? I graduated in October. Okay, so you already out of school and now you basically done with school. I went to school in the real world for now. Okay. For now. Um <clears throat> what's next is that what's next is basically trying to actually cut that up. What ne- what's next is going to be more music, focus on the craft some more, get into um the entertainment field in any aspect honestly because i i've i built enough skill sets to to know what i can do now and to brand myself and build my audience so from this month going into the next six months i would have had enough of a catalog to to um follow up warm colors i have enough visual um work to to get my face out there. I just want to get my face out there and shake hands. Just like how you were doing. So like how has that like, you know, industry reception has been so far? Like for my stuff? Yeah. Like both locally and internationally. Locally. Okay. So locally. Locally, who knows me knows me. And they seem to be fans of my work. Um Internationally, like, honestly, the only thing I really performed for real was, like, stuff like Stress Me Out, stuff from Warm Colors. And they seem to like what I've done with that, mm. you know. And then there's the the songs that I've done after Warm Colors, like Take It Back and Bay, mm. you know. I I believe, actually, no, I, I know that... I'm amassing a little fan base. I just want to amass some more to be more present. But so far, it's been it's been pretty positive. Okay. Because no one, no one has, I guess, seen a side like this before. Mm. No one has seen a unique side where it's just a just just a kid doing his own thing, but wants to do it professionally and business wise and progress with it you know so have you even like thought about like producing for other people since you sort of engineer and produce yourself yes okay i've thought about in even i've thought more about like engineering for other people because mm. that would you know give me more experience that way um in 2023 i'm i'll definitely do that more because i have beats just sitting mm. just sitting you know and also, a, a, a best, I just want to learn about the business. I have been, but I I just want to understand and amass it and practice that some more, you know, to where, and also not make it like a taboo thing. Because mm-hmm. us as creatives, I, in my, how I've seen it and how I've dealt with it prior, it was, it was like a taboo thing. I don't want it to be a taboo thing no more. I want to get paid. So, yeah. Okay. Any final words you have for the viewing audience where what they can expect for you moving forward? All right. <clears throat> well, I'm in a hiatus right now because I got to get a job. Mm. You know, you know, I want to I want to be in the next step of my life professionally. Um just being an engineer for creatives or for companies. Um, I will be dropping more music. I will be branding myself to 
to a to an image that I like, you know, and I will be ready to put this rock on the map and to put my face out there, you know. I thank all of the people who like my stuff so far, and I know that I won't let them down because I'm gonna keep going. Thank you, my friend, for joining me on this episode. It's been a long time coming. We've been trying to get this interview from, I think, last year or so. Maybe? It probably was last year. Probably yeah. was last year, earlier this year. Yeah, because I was like, I got to get Giovanni on everything. Cool. It's going to be a solo joint. And yeah, like, you know, but keep on doing your thing. Um, I think. I mean, even though next year seems sort of grim for a lot of people, but mm. in difficult times is when a lot of great ideas are born. That's when the real innovators are born because when you learn how to do more with less, you know how to do even more with more, <laughs> if mm. that makes sense. Right. But um, I think everybody has their own process. And they have to, we have to all go through our own different difficulties, trials, and tribulations to get where we need to be. Yeah. And that doesn't look, have a steady timetable per se, but if we stay on the true path and getting better at each day, we're going to eventually get where we need to be. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I've, a, a, the last thing is, um, I've definitely like developed thick skin doing this doing this thing because not everybody likes what I've done. Mm. Not everybody, maybe people might not even like me as a person, like being a, a, a people's person it, it is difficult to be sometimes. But um, I've learned that they might like the next one or the next one or the next one. Mm. You just gotta keep going, mm. you know? So I think every creator should be in tune with that over all things, mm. be in tune with with not just expecting rejection, but being comfortable and know what to do when that happens. You know, it won't happen all the time, of course, but when it does, it'll be okay. On to the next. I feel like everybody has a turn at some point, you know, and you just get to do what you got to do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, thank you again for joining me on Everything Cool. Thank you for being my first guest after my three long month. Well, it probably gonna be three bad times. Uh, three month. Wow. Hiatus. Hiatus. Road to one hundred. Absolutely. What I will do after one hundred, only the Lord knows. You got to bring everybody back for one little get together. Well, one month. special. <laughs> <laughs> one little, one little, one little Met Gala month. Probably, but we ain't know that that gonna happen sometime in twenty twenty three. We gonna see what happening man, at that point. And I'll be there performing out of time. Because mm. I know he can force me. You need to do out of time. Yeah, listen. I'll be there in the corner. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. But <laughs> well, thank you all again for watching another episode of Everything Cool. Thank you, Ryan, for coming through. And we can see y'all later. Yeah, yeah, see. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Peace. Mm -hmm.